around is. But my proudest accomplishment in my entire life is being married to Ann Marr for 41 years. We have two wonderful grown kids who God bless them, work hard. They have given us, we have three grandkids. And uh, just thinking back on my, all of my accomplishments, you know, in quotation marks, this sure. is the one that really means the most to me. I happen to have lived in Tacoma Park, Maryland for 41 years. Mm -hmm. Uh, I was a congressional staff director before running for the legislature in 1986. Uh, I also served in the army and was an environmental community organizer and campaigned against the, I dropped out of college to campaign for Gene McCarthy, who was clean for Gene uh, back in 1968. And, you know, I traveled all over the Eastern coast uh, organizing colleges for Senator McCarthy, who was not a particularly likable person. He was a kind of professor type, but I believed in ending the war in Vietnam, but then I got my draft notice because I had given up my student deferment and uh, I've been campaigning on all the campuses saying that Vietnam was a rich man's war fought, fought by poor kids. And so I went in, I didn't go to Vietnam, but it proved to be a life-changing experience for me. And ever since then, I've really dedicated myself to public service. And so environmental work, and I uh, was Ed Markey, a Union of Concerned Scientists. I was down in Washington as a lobbyist. Ed Markey, now a US Senator, hired me as a staff director. Then I left and ran for the legislature and served 20 years on the Appropriations Committee and now 16 years as comptroller. I was an English major. So this is, a, you know, I obviously have a lot of expert people around me, but I'll just describe something briefly, if I could, that gives your listeners or your viewers a chance to understand how grateful I am to have a long career in public service. Last Thursday, this is, we're speaking on a, on a Wednesday, I believe. And uh, so just four or five days ago, uh, I as chair of the Board of Revenue Estimates, which is one of the many, many jobs of the comptroller we determine what the legislature and the governor can spend as far as the budget. And it's a very important committee because it proves as a, you know, we, we give a ceiling to what they, they cannot go above it. Well, we had a meeting on Thursday. I'm the chairman of the board. We approved uh, our recommendations, which were uh, to announce a seven and a half billion, that's B as in boy, surplus for the state of Maryland, despite all the economic consequences of COVID. And I attribute that to good fiscal management by Governor Hogan and frankly, us in the comptroller's office. So that was a huge piece of good news on Thursday. And I just mentioned casually that I think, that I thought some of the money should be allocated on a one-time only basis to have a, a gas tax holiday in the state of Maryland. We have, we're, have a very high gas tax. It's 36.4 cents per gallon of gas. So I just said in passing, I think it would be a good idea if we had a 90 day gas tax holiday. Well, two hours later, same day, the governor announced he was for it. Two hours after that, the legislature leaders all said they were for it. So tomorrow, a uh, not a 90 day uh, gas tax holiday, but a 30 day gas tax holiday is going to be signed by the governor. In lightning speed, they pass this thing. It's a hundred million dollars that will be returned to Maryland drivers who are buying gas for the next uh, 30 days. And uh, that just pleases me in the sense that it's something that I think is good. I think fiscally, it's fiscally responsible because it's limited and we have the money because we have this huge surplus. And I'm also pleased to have just seen government do what it should do. And uh, that is a type of, rather than the, all the food fighting that goes on all the time and all the name calling and all that, I, I love to see government work uh, efficiently like that. And it's kind of my brand in politics. Say that I'm a fiscal moderate and I'm socially compassionate. I'm a Democrat. I live in the People's Republic of Tacoma Park. It is a very liberal area. I represented in the legislature, but I'm not a robot. So I'm an independent Democrat who tries to do the right thing for people. 
I've often said to all of my colleagues, former and current, that there's no such thing as a Democratic tax return or a Republican tax return. There are just 3.2 million tax returns we process each year, and we do a darn good job doing it, and we get $3 billion in refunds back within two and a half business days on average. That's what I aspire to, competent, efficient, effective government, but also uh, you know, empathetic government that is helping people appropriately, uh, not in good sounding programs that don't do anything, but in well-intentioned programs that have been properly vetted and properly fiscally supported. So I mentioned uh, my 16 years as comptroller. Uh, I'm going to bring that same style of government that I've had for the last 16 years to the governor's office. And I'm going to start by doing what I did in the comptroller's office. I had to earn the respect of the of the 1,200 employees in the comptroller's office because I was an accidental comptroller. I ran against William Donald Schaefer, the iconic Babe Ruth of Maryland politics, and uh, he was at the end of his career. And I uh, was in a position where, uh, frankly, uh, I, it surprised everybody, including my wife, that I won. But I did. So there I was as the new comptroller. I followed some good advice and I decided to just meet with the directors and earn their confidence. And that proved to be management 101, thumbs up, because after six months, I was able to introduce some really improvements to the agency that I think will long, long outlast me. Same thing with governor. When I'm elected, first day, I'm going to say, look, we're going to fix every road, every pothole on every road in Maryland. We're going to fix all, all the trash along the roadways in Maryland. We're going to pick that all up. And we're going to have every state agency answer the telephone within 60 seconds, just like they do in the comptroller's office. And we're going to earn your trust. I'm going to do it very publicly. I'm going to say, look, you call the number. You call 800 MD taxes and tell me if you get a live, friendly person on the phone that can navigate, help you navigate state government. Okay, so it's a very public thing. We're not going to be perfect. There'll still be a dead deer here or there along the road. There'll still be a pothole somewhere, but it will be the goal to establish some trust and confidence with people that there's a competent government in Annapolis and, and frankly, locally. Then we're going to do transformative things for the state because frankly, we've gotten a little bit old and stale in Maryland. And we're kind of, I don't know how other states view us, but we are not exactly a go-to state for people around the country. And I'm going to change that. First of all, we're going to commit to, rate, to create 100,000 new jobs in the first 100 weeks. And that's going to be done through a variety of partnerships with the private sector on infrastructure and other uh, products, projects. Mm -hmm. Then uh, we're going to attract 100,000 young adults, people in their 20s, early 30s to the state of Maryland. And we're going to say, look, if you have student debt or student loan and you come to Maryland and you work here for five years and pay taxes, we're going to forgive your student debt. And it's same thing with kids that are here going to Hopkins and all these schools. They come from all over the country and all of our own kids who are here in schools, we're going to offer the same deal to them. And I think that's going to be a uh, huge help to the state as we compete in the modern economy. And uh, I'm, looking, I'm looking forward to that. As far as the uh, healthcare system uh, in Kent County, for example, we're going to, I don't know how many federally qualified health clinics there are, but you're gonna be able to go to a community clinic or a federal, what were to call these FQHCs, you're gonna be able to reach one in 15 minutes drive. In an urban area like Baltimore, you're going to be able to get to one in a 15 minute walk. They're going to be affordable, accessible, world class, Johns Hopkins type health healthcare. Then K through 12 education. I love education. I love young people. I think the system's broken. I don't think the kids have high morale. I think the teachers are burnt out and exhausted. We're going to do a number of things, limit class size, uh, get rid of 90% of the standardized tests, uh, allow the kids to have interaction with the communities on a flex day so that they interact with small businesses and stuff and get 
get some kind of sense of what they can possibly do. We have hundreds of thousands of people that are in low wage earning jobs. They have income, but they cannot even begin to think about owning a home. They're going to be able to buy a home. Maybe Maryland backs an individual that's been vetted as to having the adequate income. And they're going to turn a high risk loan with a 20% down payment into one with a 2% down payment. Anyway, it's going to wrap. These are big ideas, Jim. And I, I throw them out only in the sense that once we've established trust and confidence, and I already have it, frankly, uh, I, you know, I have a lot of support around the state and people say, we trust you with our money. Mm-hmm. They can trust me with their money, but they can also trust me that I'm going to do the right thing for uh, the state of Maryland. Because at the end of the day, I want Maryland to be a go-to state. I have a, a broad, broad basis of experience and perspective on the budgets of the state, but my opponents in the Democratic primary, I love them all. They're terrific. They're unbelievably impressive. So I would never uh, try to say, oh, well, I'm better than that person. I'm not. They're, they're terrific. They, but nobody has 16 years as your comptroller meeting every other week on the Board of Public Works with the governor and treasurer. We're voting on an average $440 million in contracts each day. Nobody has the experience of being this, the president, the uh, chairman of the board of trustees of the pension system, which now is on its way to being fully funded. That's my position as comptroller or head of the Bureau of Revenue Estimates, which is, you know, my, uh, you know, I mentioned that with the gas tax and all that. And uh, nobody questions the fact that I have been a champion for small businesses and particularly minority and women owned businesses on the board of uh, public works. Nobody challenges me that I've unilaterally changed the tax date from April 15th to July 15th for three straight years. And that's proven to be enormous help to the state. And then the AAA bond rating of the state is solid as a Gibraltar. And I have, you know, intimate knowledge and participation in all of that. So, yes, my uh, opponents are all tremendously talented. Many of them have raised millions of dollars from out of state. They're all going to outspend me. But I think at the end of the day, I've got the trust and confidence of the voters in the state of Maryland. And mainly what they say often to me is, (laughs) I think it's kidding me sometimes, but they grab and they say, well, you've been a great comptroller. Is there any way you could be comptroller and governor at the same time? But no, I can't. I got to just run for one. And I'm rolling the dice. And I would love to have the support of anyone watching your uh, interview. And uh, I will never, ever turn my back on the Eastern Shore in any way. And people know how often I've been over there. Yeah. 